Okay, um, so today I'm going to talk about crop production, um, where in Britain we're mainly talking about spelt wheat, and talk about the results of a big synthesis project, and then some more recent data using isotope approaches to um, look at cultivation practices in more detail. So I'm just going to give you a quick bit of archaeological context, where is Britain, um, a history of archaeobotanical research, and then those synthesis and an isotopic results. So in Britain, um, in the mid-Iron Age, we're looking at 600 to 100 BC-ish. We're quite isolated, I guess, from the continent at that point. Um, so relatively little kind of material culture links. And we're looking at um, hill fort societies where they're involved in large-scale storage and production of cereals. Um, we have the late Iron Age from about 100 BC through to AD 43, where we see um, much more evidence for long-distance trade, um, elites, coinage, exchange, etc. But so far, no real evidence for agricultural change. And then the Roman period starts properly in um, AD 43, whereby Britain stays as a frontier province at the edge of the empire until AD 410, when um, the early medieval period begins. So um, the main kind of questions in terms of the Roman period are how can we um, investigate the scale and intensity of agriculture in relation to food supply to feed the Roman army and the new um, urban centres. So um, we have a very long history of archaeobotanical research in Britain with the first kind of systematic um, studies being taken place in the late 1970s. Um, with the work of these people. And then from the late, well, kind of late 70s onwards, we had a lot of um, what we call ancient monument labs undertaking detailed, um, really high quality archaeobotanical work. From 1990, we had developer funded archaeology introduced, which is great because it means we have a shed load of data. However, however it has also meant we have a lot of fragmentation in terms of archaeobotanical analysis. Um, but the key point is that we have an awful lot of data and no real way to kind of deal with it or synthesise it, which is something which I'm going to hopefully touch upon. So just in terms of what our data set is like now, um, so back in 1981 there were 55 sites from the Roman period, many of them were hand-picked antiquarian studies. Um, Mawai Karandarin study in 2007 had over 600 site phases. And the most recent study found nearly 1,400 site phases um, without any urban and military sites. So there's a large corpus of data in this region. In terms of the archaeobotanical um, data for um, the Iron Age, um, there's been relatively limited amounts of synthesis. <laughs> um, we broadly know that we have a move from emma to spelt wheat as a major crop. Um, and there's been two kind of regional um, synthesis. So Kate Parks um, undertook a detailed study of the east of England, where she found that we have a kind of gra gradual decrease in emma, increase in spelt, and kind of continuity in six row hold barley. Um, more recently, I did a smaller study in an area um, of kind of central southern Britain. And again, we have basically gloom wheat, spelt and emma, um, six row hard barley, and then very small proportions of pulses, free threshing wheat, etc. So into the Roman period, we do have teeny evidence um, for um, fruit crops and viticulture. So there's about 10 sites now in um, the central Midlands where we have some evidence for vineyards. Um, one of them has great pollen, the others are um, a little bit more dubious. But on the whole, it seems to be a kind of failed short-term experiment, and it's really only cereals that remain crop in this period. So turning now to the results of the Roman Rural Settlement Project, um, this project collated all of the excavated rural settlement data from Britain and um, produced summary archaeobotanical data. So looking at presence-absence data, we can see that spelt wheat and six row called barley uh, the most frequent crops in all of the different regions, um, the lower frequencies of emma, free fresh and wheat, um, rye, oats, etc. And then through time, there is very little change. Um, 
so basically a very gradual increase in Rai impulses and a gradual decline in Emma, but nothing major at any point. Zooming into a few particular periods, we do have um, some indications of regional um, emphasis on different crops. So um, in the southeast in Kent, we have um, a mix of barley, spelt wheat, with some more pulse in some areas, through to um, Hampshire in the bottom left-hand corner, so an area of chalkland, we have more emphasis on barley, and then through to the um, East Midlands in the top left-hand corner, we have much more emphasis on spelt wheat. And if we drill down to sample level data, you can see this a bit more clearly. So um, on the right-hand side, we have the East Midlands, and by the late Roman period, um, there's an awful lot of black, so basically a very high reliance on spelt wheat. So we have a reasonably um, clear understanding of how crop choice changes through time in Britain, but we don't have a very good handle on how crop cultivation methods changed and how they relate to um, different site types or um, you know, different areas of the country. So to that end, um, I've recently undertaken some stable isotope analysis, as we've heard about previously, so I don't need to explain the methodology in too much detail. Um, so the first case study is a site called Stanick, which is a long-term um, um, site of occupation from the Iron Age through to the late Roman period. Um, it's in the East Midlands, so on an area of um, gravel and clays. Um, and it was a long-term detailed excavation in the 1980s, producing abundant archaeobotanical material. So this was an initial kind of pilot study with um, 41 samples. So in the top left-hand corner, we have a Delta 13C results. So broadly looking at water status, and in Britain, we're expecting the water not to fluctuate too much because it's quite um, you know, wet in many periods. So broadly, you can see that the um, barley and the spelt are about one per mil um, different, which is what we see in crops at um, many sites, and it seems to be a physiological difference. And then there's very little difference between the Iron Age and Roman period in terms of carbon. In terms of nitrogen, um, we have a decrease from the Iron Age to the Roman period in all crop types by about one per mil. Um, and the main crops, so barley and spelt, are actually very comparable in their values. So we're seeing um, both a decrease in probably manuring through time, but real like um, the same treatment of these two main crops. So to take this analysis further, um, I've undertaken um, a larger study in an area of um, the Chalkland in southern Britain, um, taking um, the same time span, so the Iron Age through to the late Roman period but also integrating it with the um, previously published faunal isotope data. So these are a series of sites around a hill fort called Danebury. So we go from Danebury Hill Fort itself um, through to several late Iron Age enclosed settlements and then two mid-late Roman villas to give the whole kind of time slice. And I selected these sites because they're all in a very small micro-region. Um, as you can see here, so they're all within, say, 10 um, kilometres of each other. So we can control for a lot of the variation which we know can affect carbon and nitrogen isotopes. So we've got Danebury Hill Fort in the centre, with the two Roman villas to the north and west, and the um, late Iron Age farmsteads um, in the area around Danebury. So first off, we can look at the carbon results through time. So hopefully you can see in it, again, we have this um, spacing between barley and wheat of around one per mil, but it does fluctuate um, over time. But the clearest pattern is that the Delta 13C values decrease in the late Iron Age period, which would suggest that there are kind of either wetter or more closed conditions. And we have a range of um, multi-proxy evidence for climate in this period, but you can see that the periods which are indicated as wetter by several lines of evidence, um, it's, it's several periods throughout this whole um, time slice. So it can't be that the late Iron Age isotope shift is purely due to climate. So instead, I would suggest that it's due to more um, local choice in the soils that are being used 
So uh, late Iron Age sites with those lower Delta 13C values um, are on areas um, of a landscape with wetter soils, so um, at the edges of river valleys. Whereas the um, late Roman sites with higher Delta 13C values are on the um, clay soils. So we see the choice of different areas of landscape. So looking now at the Delta 15N values, um, which we're mainly interested in for manuring, hopefully you can see that there's um, on the whole quite low values. So we're going from zero to six per mil here. So nowhere near like the 12 we saw in Natalia's presentation. Um, and broadly speaking, a decrease through time. So the late Roman, lately Villa values are down to um, very low, so zero per mil. Um, so part of this low delta 15N is due to the calcareous soils. So there's been several recent studies um, by Rick Schulten and others that have shown, shown that faunal, um, herbivore, isotope values are very low on chalk soils, and we're not entirely sure why. Um, but what we can do here is use a wild herbivore baseline constructed from previous isotopic analysis and then um, put those manuring bands on which have been um, built from the experimental studies in Oxford. So broadly speaking, we can see that most of the um, crops are either being um, manured in a kind of medium way or they're not receiving any manure at all. So the main kind of pattern here is that we have extensification so a lower input of manure in the late Roman period. Interestingly, you can see that Dunkirk Barn and Greatly are pursuing quite different strategies. So these are two villas about you know, a few kilometres apart, which is very interesting. And also at most sites, the mean for barley and spelt is exactly, it's statistically identical. So there's no different treatment of different crops other than at natural bank crops, which is a late Iron Age banjo enclosure. So bringing in the herbivore data now, hopefully, so what I've done here is plotted what the expected chaff um, delta 15N values would be. So we know that they're about 2.4 per mil lower than the grain values. And then if we plot on the sheep and the cattle, and then we can expect that there's about a four per mil um, dietary trophic level. So that would imply that the chaff of these manured crops is a very likely to be a main dietary source for these herbivores. So what it suggests is that we have a system of sheep folding taking place in the mid and late Iron Age, whereby sheep are um, um, placed onto the recently harvested fields, and they can then graze on the stubble of the harvested crops, and then they directly manure the crops as they're um, grazing. So what I would suggest is that the, the late Roman um, delta-15N shift is indicating that this kind of sustainable system is actually breaking down. So perhaps they have become so focused on cereal production that they're kind of neg neglecting um, the manure supply, or they're just trying to maximise their crops so much that they've really extended the areas under cultivation. So just to kind of summarise what this has found about the late Roman river economies, we know they're cultivating barley and spelt wheat in the same conditions. Um, whether this is kind of a rotation or just an Iron Age kind of mixed cropping system, we're not quite sure. Um, we see a different targeting of soil types um, in the late Iron Age period, but really a kind of extensification, at, especially at Great Villa. And if you look at these two villas in more detail, <laughs> Greatly is, has a clear emphasis on crop production. It has seven grain drying ovens, huge aisle <coughs> barns, whereas Dunkirk Barn is much more of a kind of um, wealthy residence with a bathhouse and ornamental garden. So it suggests that the villa more into kind of market orientated production is going for a more extensive farming practice. And then just to end, East shifts that we see towards pre fetching cereals in many other parts of Europe are not taking place in Britain in the Iron Age or Roman period. And those changes don't really happen until the um, early medieval period, um, as this recent work by Mark McCarriger has shown. And spelt wheat, which is really dominant in the late Roman period, basically disappears by the 6th century. So something clearly very major is happening in that early medieval period. So just to conclude, we clearly have a shift towards a Roman period farming system based on spelt wheat and hulled barley treated very similarly. And the application of crop stable isotope analysis has shown that we do see a shift towards more extensive 
husbandry conditions and the late Roman period. Great, thank you.